Mahalanya Skandar. Hello everyone, welcome back. This week we're making a porthole liner and I'm just making a pattern and marking out the size um, really to give us a pattern to make our jigs and everything to, to cut them out. We're just back from the uh, local wood yard where we've bought this Sapili hardwood from. Um, we bought it on a uh, 40 mil thickness or inch and a half thickness and it's about four meters long wasn't it? Yeah. Something like that, four meter long piece. Um, we got those to the wood yard to mill this down straight down the center of the board so we've ended up with sort of double the quantity really. Um, so it's now it's over to the workshop where we're going to put this all through the uh, planar thickness of which we've actually been kindly loaned from a guy at the woodyard called Talon. So thank you for the loan of this, it's coming really handy. Once it was all plain to the thickness we needed, um, we then cut all the pieces to size, ready for when we do the hatches and for the porthole. that's it all chopped up now um, we've done it straight away because the first lot of sapili we had um, after leaving it for a while and the wide planks it started to, to bow so that's why we've got all of it chopped up at one go we've had a few really cold days lately and today was absolutely beautiful so we just carried on going till late um, complete silence in the boatyard everyone's gone home but apart from us making a noise yeah so to start then we're doing the porthole and we're going to be doing that today so these are the strips that we've cut down to the width that we need and we just need to um, cut the angles on them for the inner ring of the porthole linings and we've cut the paper pattern up and just using that as a guide to make sure we get the right length um, but then the angle will be cut on the chop saw. So you set the angle on? 22.5.
So that's the outer ring sections all cut, in, cut into size. I'm going to concentrate on the inner ring now. And the inner ring, the same as the outer ring, being it's a, it's a slightly smaller size, but the actual um, pieces, there is eight, eight pieces that make up the circle. So there's going to be actually three rings. So I've got to make cut 24 of these pieces up to make that. This chop saw, the angle... You put the angle on, but it's just a slight, slightly out, which when you're doing a circle. Yeah, you set it to 22 and a half there, which is the what the right angle to do. But it's yeah, it's obviously not dialed in properly on there, mm. is it? But we found if we put the, just a piece of sandpaper. On that edge there. Yeah, on that edge, it's pulling it enough sort of, yeah. for the angle to get, make the circle. Bit of a faff, but it's worked on the sample, so let's stick to that. Mm, I know. There. Mm. Yeah, they cut it right there. Just keep the same. Do that the same. Yeah. all fit together a lot better the piece that I'm laying it on is the template that we did well the, the mock-up just to see uh, how the pattern pieces would work um, and this one fits a lot better don't it yeah now we're satisfied that they're all right we can uh, get gluing them all up and clamp them up So we repeat the same process for the uh, front face of the porthole. Um, we've made these um, purposefully a bit chunkier than the sort of ones you can sort of buy on online yeah. and stuff. Because I we, think these were eight centimetres. Yeah, they're about eight centimetres wide, which we prefer the look of those because we want it to sort of be a feature of the window, yeah, really. Just so they look quite chunky and and substantial. <laughs> <laughs> we like it to be substantial. Right. So we're setting up making a jig at the moment. <laughs> Another jig. <laughs> at least it's not a template. Mm. Yeah, so we're going to take this base plate off, these screws out, put the plate on there, mark the holes, drill the holes, so that that is going to attach to the router. And then we'll plunge a bit through the middle so we know exactly where the centre is. And then we need to mark from there the distance we need for the so half the diameter half the diameter of the circle. Whole we need. Side, yeah. yeah. So if, the, if it's 18 inch portal, we need nine inch from there, from there to the outside edge of that cutting blade to, to cut the circle. Yep. So I need to go and fetch a Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> oh no! And the drill. And the oh drill. no! Back yeah. again. Yeah. Go for it. 
Sure. There goes nothing, Nanny. Time to say another thank you and uh, a favour for the loan of the router from a guy down at the boat yard. Um, it's come in so useful this has, so it saves us a lot of trouble Simon, so thank you very much. And that's all there is to it. <sighs> we left the drill bit in to use as the centre um, anchor for the jig. Yeah, for the jig. Um, usually we take that out, turn it upside down, and do the smooth bit, but it worked better like this. Yeah. And we couldn't get it out. We well, couldn't get it out. <laughs> That's the last of the three inner pieces. Um, we're only routering the inside of them because the outside, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be smooth. We can deal with that extra material yeah. later. It's never seen, is it? No. And we're just using uh, some pieces of scrap wood to help clamp and hold the, um, the wood in place while we router. I hope it fits the window now, my yeah, dad. Over, honey.
last one goes on and then I can leave these um, and come back to these tomorrow once they've all dried. It's been handy people leaving these block pavers outside our lockup. Um, we've always used them as weights, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they, they fit perfect, they're easy to handle and they're, they're really heavy. They are heavy. So next day, AD ain't changed his top yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're all dry and so um, you're just cutting off the excess, aren't you? Yeah. Um, quite randomly, it hasn't got to be done exactly. nice and neat because this is going to be behind the wall. You're not going to see it. It's just really so it fits into the window frame gap itself. Just want to get this area all cleaned up and trimmed back uh, just before we uh, try it the size. So we've got it sitting quite nice where we want it. So we've marked on the walls, um, just on the wall and the frame, so we know that when we pull it back in again that they we know that's, that's about where it needs to line up. Um, but because the wall is uneven with the tongue groove in t only slightly, but in different areas, we've uh, marked with a pencil so we can sand sand it down to the the nearest, yeah. the, the, the lowest point, was it? Sort of the average point between the yeah. lowest and the highest, yeah. 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 Given this a uh, light sand, just to get it leveled out a little well better because it's easy to do that while it's not glued to the outer ring. So the next step we've got to do is to get some glue all the way around this, this inner edge and then we're going to uh, stick this, glue this to that and then weight it down with some bricks. So uh, I'll get on with that now. I'll glue. I'll put the, all the glue on. You don't need to see me putting glue on wood. So I'll, I'll put all the glue on, um, get this all in place, and then put the bricks on, and then bring you back in and show you what we've done and uh, where we're at with that. With a change of plan, I think I'll I think I'll film this little bit just to, so it's a, like to show the completed job. So yeah, just going all the way around there. previously been using um, a glue called tight bond but uh, we ran out and reordered and it hasn't come in time so we're doing this with Gorilla Glue but I think we might even stick with this in future because it's, it's, it's really good it, it, it dries clear as well yeah yeah which is a, a bonus I think it's probably near enough the same probably the sort same of stuff, stuff but it does grip well doesn't it yeah but we've been pleased with it we've done a tester piece and we tried to pull we it apart we couldn't get it apart no. <laughs> So we've sat this on that glue all the way around. And now we're gonna just weight it down with some of these bricks again on the on the sides all the way around. And then leave that to set and then we can come back to it and then sand it all sand it all back and get it all flat and pretty and then uh, start to fit them into the portholes right that inner ring now is sitting on this 
the outer ring um, all glued into place weighted down now with these bricks all the way around so I'm going to leave that now overnight just for the glue to set and then once that's set we can then start uh, finishing the edges off and uh, getting it all nicely sanded ready for the um, Danish yaw to go onto them. <laughs> We're trying to keep this as, uh, we're rounding it off, but we're trying to keep it as uh, square as possible. We didn't want to router it to give a, an oval. We want that sort of square look. Granddad's got a new toy. Again. So we've oiled them up the same as what we've done with the hatches and it's just a Rustin's Danish oil that we've diluted with white spirit for the first two coats and then we've done a full coat over the top but we're not going to completely finish the oil in until it's actually on the wall and the screw holes are filled with the, with the little dowels. I'm really pleased with how they're looking and again a bit like the hatches the first one we've taken ages doing um, just trying to work out how we would do it and just working together on it but from now on the rest should be quite quick That's it, H. Yeah. I feel lovely around that window. Yeah. That's great. I 
what? I don't think we need to put any. No, I don't think we need that. I'll just, I'll, that's why I just rub my finger around. I don't think it needs anything on it, H. No. I think you're going to spoil it if you do that. So I think we're going to leave the outside edge and not cork it or fill it or anything. It fits really flush all the way round. It, it's quite nice. Um, it's just the inner, the inner bit that goes against the window frame. Um, we are using, well, we think we're going to use a clear silicon, but we're going to do that when all the hatches, when all the liners are in, um, and we can do it all in one go. 